You got to get more listings, guys. There's nothing to it but to do it. If your listing, if your deal goal, how many families you want to help this year in 2024 is 20, for example, then you got to go and get 20 listings. No matter how you look at it, no matter what market it is, you will hit your goals. Some listings won't sell, but the listings that do sell attract other listings and other buyers. That's it. Who would like to role play? Any objections, any insights, any comments, any questions? Axel, good morning. Good morning, John. How are you doing? How are you? Very good. Let's do it. Why don't we work on something? What's the conversation that we're uh, com coming across right now that we cannot handle? Let's work on it. Um, yeah, just name it. Let's do it. Absolutely. I do not uh, upload these in Jose University, but I do uh, send it to Aaron uh, in a separate file. So I'm sure mm -hmm. he's putting it somewhere. Kenneth? Sorry, Axel, I got distracted there. What did you no, say? No worries. No worries. Yeah, what did you say? Um, I, I didn't come up with any topics. So any topics we can we can just chat about. All right, good. Well, who wants hey, to role play? Let's practice. Come on. Okay, hey, John, right, this, this is here from Calgary. Oh, perfect. Hey. Hey, John, uh, I just had a quick question. It's not really uh, like, as you know, the market's really slow and the inventory is pretty low, right? Uh, yeah. So how do you how do you keep your clients engaged uh, when they're, you know, super pumped up about getting their property uh, in a short amount of time? But, uh, you know, there's nothing out there that they like. Right. So how do you keep them? How do you keep them engaged uh, in this in this market? That's a great question. And I want to know what you mean by how do you keep them engaged? Like, what does that look like in the sales process? I don't understand the engage part. So uh, many times, like when there is no inventory, like you're talking to them, but, uh, you know, they're expecting uh, you to send them properties which they might like and things like that. Uh, so at the end of the conversation, uh, they sort of, uh, go back to hey did you get any new properties but there's nothing out there which fits their criteria um so then we're kind of just in that limbo of of conversations and uh not much action happening at that moment uh so what do you do in those instances yeah great yeah, this is a good problem to have guys it means the market is hot okay and once anything pops up right they're gonna jump on it which means you basically have a very motivated buyer. Am I correct on that? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, constant communication. Every single day, I'm going out there cold calling, door knocking, expire listings for sale by owners, online leads. What I'm doing every single day prospecting is two intentions. Number one, I'm looking for sellers for my buyers. So when I'm cold calling, door knocking, expire listings for sale by owners, online leads, I'm looking for listings for my buyers. So you can get back to them. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I made 100 calls today. I reached 20 people looking for listings for you. Do you have any questions for me today? Because you got no inventory for them right now, but they know that you're working for them. And for your sellers, you're calling them every single week. This week, I talked to 160 people looking for buyers for your home. Do you have any questions for me right now? Well, no, the, the home is not sold. What do you think we should do? Well, based on what the market is telling us, based on the buyers that have come through, then we have no offers. We need to adjust the price. Are you ready to go ahead and adjust the price to get the property sold? Does that make sense? Constant communication. Even when you have nothing to report, even when you have no inventory, even when you have no buyers coming through the door for your listing, you need to let them know, hey, there are no buyers through the door, but I talked to 160 people this week. Do you have any questions for me? 
Are you ready to are you ready to adjust the price to get the property sold? And guys, you never want to get a call from your buyers or your sellers. If you have, that means you lost. That means you're not motivated enough. I never want to get a call from my clients. I know it's it's bad news when they call. Right? Because you're not on top of things. Does that make sense? I don't, sorry, I yeah, didn't get yeah, your name. Meet. Yeah. Meet. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Meet. Sorry, I couldn't see it. Uh, but yeah, so if, if that's what you have in mind, you need to communicate with your current clients all the time, all the time, all the time. This is what we don't talk about a lot, right? Because we want to reach out to new, fresh, old you know, something that we, someone that we haven't talked to, but what we fail to do is we, we don't call our current clients. We take the listing and we basically let them sit and we call them once a week. No, 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 no. You gotta, you, you some of these listings for the first two weeks, you gotta be calling them every single day, texting them every single day, WhatsApping them, e emailing them every single day, communicating with them uh, what you're doing to the property, right? And what you are, mm -hmm seeing out there in the market right and this is how you get referrals is that you communicate with your buyers and sellers every single day with your buyers for sure you know you're communicating with them every single day hey you know today we don't have any properties do you have any questions for me you know today i, I went out there and i door knocked you know 100 doors and i got 20 people to answer unfortunately i don't have any leads today but if anything pops up are you ready to go ahead and make an offer and, and, and purchase your property oh yeah you know i'm motivated yeah great perfect that's how you get people engaged. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does, John. Thank you so much. Constant communication, guys. That's just great customer service. That's how you get referrals is from your current clients. A lot of times we get the client and we just let them sit, right? Okay. Any other questions, guys? Hi, John. My name is Aqua. Thank you, first of all, for having me on your platform. I'm here in Chicago. Um, quick question. I was not able to, I set a listing appointment and the gentleman was, um, you know, was going to meet. He agreed to meet with me. However, when I started to do the prequal, he wouldn't even let me get down the list. He asked me, was I like the FBI? And uh, <laughs> he you know, ask me what did I work for the CIA? And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, you know, he really felt uncomfortable <laughs> with me asking the question. So I just, mm. it, I just decided not to go on the appointment because he would not allow me to get the information that I needed. I have no idea what this guy's intentions. It was an expired listing. Yeah, yeah, this is great. And uh, I, I would have to assume that when you're asking questions, you're not repeating and approving. So what happens, guys, when you don't know what the client says? What do you guys think? Hmm. Any takers? What do you well, guys think? Question, John? If you are not repeating and approving what the prospect is saying to you, what happens? You are not listening. That's like an answer. Interrogation. Ah, yes, you are interrogation and you're not listening yeah i love those answers that's exactly why people feel interrogated are you an fbi are you from the cia because you're asking me all these questions finding out trying to find out information that means that you're not having a conversation right you're just asking questions so let's practice that why don't you why don't you role play the prequel with me okay let's hear some Repeat and improving in that so we can help you along with this uh, type of conversation. Let's go. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so John, since I have you on the phone, um, I just have a couple more vi uh, vital, important, vitally important questions to ask. Can I, um, can I borrow you for another minute? Yeah. Hello? John, did Hello? I lose you? Yeah. Can I ask you a few more questions? Uh, sure, go ahead. Okay. If what I say makes sense and all of the numbers line up and you feel absolutely comfortable and confident that I can get your home sold, were you planning to list with me when I see you today? Well, I don't know. I haven't, I don't even know who you are. So, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. 
Okay, fair enough. All right. And were you planning on interviewing any other agents? Um, yeah, well, two, two or three, at least, you know, we, we just came off the market. So, you know, be smart to do that. Absolutely. Okay. So you are planning on interviewing other agents and just curious, John, what qualities are you looking for in an agent that, that you work with? What qualities? Okay. Well, I mean, why does this matter? Sorry. Just so I have an idea of what you expect from the next agent that you work with. Oh, just so you haven't. Well, yeah, I mean, I want to get the property sold. I mean, absolutely. Sure. Okay. More to that. So it sounds like you want an aggressive agent. Okay, I got it. And just to confirm, you said you, just to confirm that you are moving to Florida. Uh, correct. Yeah. And okay, and you wanted to be there as soon as possible for a job, correct? That's right. Okay. Now, when I see you, I see that you have it listed for 900, 900,000. And just, you know, as a professional, I'm sorry, how much did you want to list for? I see that you have it listed for 900. Uh, well, I mean, I certainly, if we can get 900, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. All right. 900. I'm just taking notes here. And just so you know, John, as a professional real estate agent, I do study homes and prices every day. So I'll assume that you'll list at a price that will cause the home to sell, correct? Yeah, but I don't want to give it away. That's Absolutely. It's 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 for sale, not on sale, right? Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what price won't you go below? Um no, I'm not about to give my bottom line away, but uh, I mean, if you can get me 900, that, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And just so, you know, I can prepare a preliminary net sheet. How much do you owe on the property? Uh, we owe about 300. 300. Awesome. Great job, John. So have you ever thought about selling the property yourself? I have not. No. So Okay, well, that's why I'm here, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, just to take that burden off your plate. Um, also, also, just curious, do you want to, uh, are you willing to finance the buyer or do you want all of your cash out? I would like to have all my cash out to go to Florida. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, all of your cash out. Okay, and briefly, could you just describe the home for me? I'm looking at the pictures. It looks lovely. Um, is there anything in addition to the pictures that um, I need to know about that you've done? Um, no, I mean, just what you see, we got a four bed, two bath, you know, renovated uh, in 1990. And, okay. um, you know, it's, it's a great home. It looks like you know? a lovely home. Thank you for that. Okay, so I'll be sending over a package of information. Will you do me a favor and just take a moment to review it? Uh, sure, what's in it? Oh, okay, great question. So it'll include the the comparative market analysis, just the you know uh, list of properties that have recently sold in your area, um, and also my marketing plan of action. And I'll include the net sheet as well. Yeah, sounds good. That's okay. Good so just you know, do you have any questions before I come? Uh, what's your commission? Oh, commission. That's a great question. And the commission will, I can just tell you this, we can speak about it the first thing when I see you. And, you know, just so you know, the commission will not be a reason why we don't do business together. Fair enough? Uh, yeah, that's fair. But what do you charge? Okay, well, I charge three and a half percent. And we use that as a marketing tool, just to get the property sold. And the other portion is what you'll pay the buyer's agent. Now you can decide what you want to pay the buyer's agents, starting at 2%. But most sellers will pay two and a half, just as an incentive to get the agent to work really hard at finding a qualified buyer. So oh, okay. The, yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, it's quite high. I mean, you charge three and a half percent on your end. That's um, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Thank okay, you. great. That's all I ask. Okay, and just so you know that the meeting should take between twenty and thirty minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fair. All right, perfect. And will all of the the decision makers be there? Uh, yes. 
Okay, perfect. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you, John, tomorrow at four o'clock. Okay, great. Um, that was good. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, unless you weren't doing that on that call, I don't see why he would be like, hey, you know, what, are you CIA or the FBI? Um, <laughs> A very friendly voice. Uh, I can't see your face, but, uh, you know, um, I, I felt like that was great. Uh, besides the a few upswings when you're asking questions that made you sound a little bit unsure. Other okay. than that, I felt like it was good. I, I wasn't too hard on you. Again, this is not a high rejection um, conversation either. You've already got the appointment. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know Aaron just came in, but Jose, so, so I'm sorry, how do you pronounce your name? It's Aqua Tanise, but I go by Aqua. Aqua Tanise. Wow. That's a very <laughs> beautiful name. Aqua. Thank All you. right. Jose, what, what do you think when people are asked or are saying, Hey, are you the FBI? Are you the CIA during a prequel? Uh, what do you think the person's doing wrong or what should they be doing instead? You're muted, by the way. Yeah, I think that if if they if they tell me like, are you the FBI or the CIA? They're probably saying that like, why are you asking me all these questions? Basically? That's exactly right. That's what he asked me, Jose. <laughs> yeah. So I think that has to do with making the like you can ask questions but giving them like the reasons why you're asking certain questions and also like repeating and approving and making the client feel comfortable so mm -hmm. I'll give you like there's this agent on my team who like uh i told her that sometimes when you know where somebody lives you can and they're looking to buy something else you can tell a lot about what they want to buy sorry you could tell a lot about what they want to buy um, by asking them where they live. So there's a difference. So like, let, let me ask you this, John. Like, if I were just to tell you, hey, John, where do you live? Like, or versus if I were to tell you, hey, John, like, uh, hey, John, so in order for me to help you uh, find a home, sometimes I notice patterns, uh, different patterns in people's buying patterns and knowing where someone lives often helps me identify what potential neighborhoods would be a good potential match. Would you mind me asking like where you live? Yeah. So you set it up really well instead of just saying, Hey, where do you live? So I think yeah. it, it, like a lot of it, like, so if you notice, like for me, this, this would happen like in the prequel, I would ask questions a certain way and I would get the same responses and those same responses wouldn't be that pleasant. Like, I'll give you an example of that. Like, whenever uh, Tanisha, um, whenever Aqua, asked, what, what did you ask? Uh, it was something along the lines like, uh, um, I, like I can't remember what it was, but I'll tell you where I would get them. So, whenever I would ask people, like, how much do you owe on the property? Mm -hmm. people, people would always be like, well, wh why do you want to know how much I owe on the property? Mm -hmm. So instead of asking how much do you owe on the property, I would preface it a little bit. So I would say, well, the next thing I'm going to do for you is I'm going to prepare what I call a seller net sheet for you. Uh, this is going to let you know like net, net, bottom line, what you can expect to receive at closing after any escrow title or any realtor fees. Is there still a balance on the property or is the property like paid off free and clear? And when I phrase it that way, I stop getting the, the why do you want to know which the why do you want to know is almost like 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 hey like 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 almost like like they're confused as to it so the least times you can do that the more comfortable the client's gonna feel so i would say that you know the script like question by question it's just a matter of like taking it to the next level so if you're okay john i like to do the prequel just so that she can kind of compare and then like challenge her to be like okay there's another level above this in asking the prequel basically mm. sure aqua do you want to be the client so you can kind of feel this conversation sure yeah let's do it okay hey aqua so before we get together i just have a couple of really quick questions i need to ask you 
I'm going to be doing a little bit of homework on the property. I want to make sure that I'm fully prepared. Um, is it okay if I ask them now? Oh, sure. Got it. Um, so the, the first question that I had, and it's just, uh, you might have already covered this with me. R remind me again, like, wh where is it that you're moving to? Oh, I move into Florida. Got it. Good for you. H how do you feel about the move to Florida? E excited? Nervous? <laughs> yes, very excited. Uh-huh. Can't wait to get there. I love it. Congratulations on that. Good. And then just obviously for me to kind of prepare best, um, are you going to be selling here and buying in this program or do you just have to focus on selling here and then you can talk about the whole Florida thing in the future? Um, I'm sorry, Jose, you were breaking up a little bit. What was the question? Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, what I was asking is, um, are we just focused on selling this property or are you going to be selling and buying in Florida at the same time? Meaning like, is this going to be like a contingent sale? Oh, no, no, no. I, yeah, this, I just need to sell this one. Got it. Okay. So you've already got the Florida part. Yes. There's no need for us to focus on that one. Correct. Fantastic. Okay, good. And then I know that this is important for a lot of people. I know that timing is very important. Like what's an ideal time frame for one, having the home on the market and then two, having it sold? Uh, well, it needs to be sold. Okay. So the sooner the better, if I'm here. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Made a note of that. Fantastic. Now, when I see you, how much were you thinking about listing the home for? Well, I really would like to get close to the my um, original asking price. Okay. Okay. So I see that the uh, you say your original asking price, like 700000 Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. That makes sense. Got it. So I'm going to transition a little bit. If it's an expired, I'll ask some additional questions. I'll be like, okay. And because uh, that's what it sounds like you're kind of leading it in, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, and just out of curiosity, like during the last time that you had it on the market, did you have anybody make you any offers in writing or at least any talks of any offers? No. Got it. So no offers during the time that it was on the market and no talks of offers on it at that at that point. Mm, no. Got it. OK, so I made a note of that. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do for you is I'm going to prepare what I call a seller net sheet for you. Uh, this is going to let you know, like net, net bottom line, what you can expect to receive at closing. Is there still a balance on this property or is the property already like paid off, like free and clear? Uh, I owe about 200. 200,000 basically. Uh -huh. Got it. Okay. And then um, I for actually forgot to ask this. Um, let's say that somebody came in like with a cash offer, like close of escrow, like 14 days, no contingencies as is. But let's say that they offered you six hundred and fifty thousand. How would you respond to that? Um, what well, cash? Yeah, cash. That means, close of escrow, fourteen days, like uh, no contingencies, strictly as is. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely consider it. Uh, yes. Okay. So you would consider that basically, in other words. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Um. So you've never thought about like selling the property yourself, right? Like some sort of for sale by owner type of situation. At least that's what it sounds like. No, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. Got it. And you probably don't want to finance anything for the buyer, right? You don't want to be like a bank. You want to take the money here and move it to Florida, correct? Yes, absolutely. I need all of my cash. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, so would you describe your home to me like meaning like any upgrades any like upgrades in the bathroom uh the kitchen or if it's an expired i wouldn't ask it this way i would i would ask it in a way that it says hey well i would i took a look at the pictures online has anything changed to the property like meaning like any upgrades since the last time that it was listed for sale mm -hmm. oh and since you mentioned it i did put in new windows okay yeah exactly so Anything that's pretty, that's pretty much it. And the new windows. Fantastic. Anything else? Um, you know what? I did have the the hardwood floors restained. Okay. 
where we finished. Yeah. And th that's about it. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Got it. So the next thing I'm going to do for you is I'm going to prepare what I call a seller or a marketing package of information. In this marketing package, I'm going to include the most recent comps. I'm going to include a copy of our marketing plan of action. And I'm also going to include a link to our online reviews. We have over 265 five-star reviews. I'm going to send that to you via email. If I send it to you today by five, will you take a few moments and review it? Uh, sure. Great. And then what's a good email for me to do so? Aqua at gmail.com. Fantastic. And then do you have any questions for me before we meet? Um, you know, what? what is your fee? That's a really good question. So I don't know if I've mentioned this to you in the past, but my fee is actually flexible. In other words, meaning I don't have like a flat, uh, like a set fee mm -hmm. <laughs> that I charge. I usually try to be flexible just depending on whatever my client's needs are. Is there like a certain fee structure that you're looking for to try to see if maybe I can accommodate to that? Well, I know the last agent that, um, that I worked with, they charged four and a half. Got it. Okay. So you, you've got that in mind, basically that the last agent was charging four and a half. And obviously it sounds like that's important to you. So he, here's what I've done. I've made a, a note of that. What I would propose is let's get together. I'll share with you what I can sell it for. I'll share with you what you would net and what I would do to market the home. And then I promise you after that, if you actually like the way that we work, commission won't be the reason we don't do business. Is that okay with you? <laughs> yes, that's perfect. Fantastic. Okay. So the last question that I had for you is my intention is to do a really good job for you. Obviously, my intention is to help you get the property sold, provide a high level of customer service. Like what qualities are you looking for ultimately this time around in the real estate agent that you end up selecting? Well, um, obviously somebody who could get the, the, the property sold and, um, you know, somebody who will keep me in the loop, keep me updated on what's going on. Okay. So in other words, you're looking for really good communication and yes. then you're looking for results. Bottom line, like, Hey, look, like I don't want to have my home on the market again and not sell basically. Absolutely. Fantastic. Now, provided that when we meet tomorrow, you feel comfortable, obviously you feel confident, but most importantly, you're like, man, this guy's the result guy. He's going to get my property sold no matter what. And based on everything I could see and read his communications on point, um, are you open, obviously, if all that comes to fruition, to the opportunity of hiring me when we meet tomorrow at 530? Yeah, I would be open to it. Obviously, I want to hear what you have to say. Okay, fantastic. Well, Akko, I am really excited. I'm excited about the opportunity to meet with you. I'm excited about helping you and your family get one step closer to Florida. W won't that be great? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're brilliant, Jose. You guys are brilliant. Oh my God. I need you. I need to take you all with me. <laughs> okay. Thank so you so I, much. I, I, I remembered Aqua what, what, what it was about the pre-listing package. So like one of the times I would always get like, well, what's in the package? It's like, well, what's in the package? So I was like, why don't I just fucking tell them up front what's in the package to eliminate <laughs> that question. So like there's somebody that out there that says, the better the presentation, the less objections you get. Meaning like sometimes you can actually incorporate certain objections into the presentation and it eliminates them and it actually makes it a better presentation, basically. Mm, okay. Okay. That makes sense. And then here's another thing. Here's another mistake that I noticed. So I noticed that people, and obviously I didn't know that this was an expired at the beginning, but like if people like uh like are an expired i won't say how much do you want to list the home for this time or the uh or i may say hey look obviously you had it on the market last time for 800 how much do you want to list the home for this time around got but it i'll accommodate based on the situation meaning like if it's an expired i won't ask them like hey would you describe the home for me i'll say hey look obviously i looked at the pictures the last time it was online just out of curiosity, have you done any cha changes or modifications since the last time it was listed, basically? And the reason I do that <clears throat> is I would get that 
that knee jerk reaction, like the almost like you don't understand me. Like, Hey, didn't you take a look at the pictures Mm -hmm. or, or they would tell me like the pictures are online. So I would almost in my presentation, like handle it before I even got it. Does that make sense? Or even like if they they tell me, well, I want to list it at the same price. I'll ask them this. And this is one of my favorite questions about pricing. I'll ask them, Hey, the last time that you were listed, did you have any offers on the property? And like, let's say that they tell me, yeah, we were listed at 800. And the first day that I came on the market, I actually had an offer at 780. And then they walked. I'm like, huh, I have a piece of information already. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, and, or, or they might say, yeah, you know, at some point I had an offer that was like 750. Had I known what I know now, I probably should have taken it. I'm like, boom, I've collected this piece of information now that will serve me. Because now I know like, hey, look, like, they had an offer at 750 at some point, like maybe the market, maybe that's where the market is at. Maybe that's where we need to be at price wise. Mm-hmm. Obviously I'll still do the CMA, but I'm just collecting information basically. Wow. Thank you so much. That was your brilliant John, Aaron, you guys, thank you. Hey, he's all right. Don't do that to him. His head's already. No, I'm <laughs> serious. It's like those words makes like a hundred percent. The way well, you yeah. heard it, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Well, well, here's what I'm aware of. So there's stages to this. You know, like tiramisu, there's levels and stages and different layers, right? So the first layer is is first you have to learn the questions. And guys, that's elementary school. Don't pat yourself on the back because you know the questions. That's like yeah. learning the fucking alphabet. And then be like, like, oh, I'm not getting. The oh, my God, I'm so cool. I learned the alphabet. I'm like, dude, that's fucking ridiculous. Like from school to the game. OK, the second thing is once I've learned the questions, now I have to learn how to ask them in a way that doesn't produce the response that you're getting. Because the reason why people are like, hey, you know, like, why do you want to know that? It's because you're asking them in a very staccato manner, like bang, 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 bang. So if I was to like bump into Lena and be like, yo, where'd you go to school? Why'd you pick that sweater? Why did you cut your hair like that? Da, da, da. She'd be like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Right? That's exactly what would happen. Where instead, if I can learn to couch questions and present them in such a way where you answering them is beneficial to you, not me. So like, in other words, like, hey, you know, before we connect, I just have a couple super quick questions to ask you just to make sure that I'm fully prepared and I can do a great job for you and your family and provide you with the information that you guys need. And I'll be brief because I know your time is valuable. Who is that about? Them. They're like, oh, okay, it's about me. Let's say they say to you, like, well, why do you want to know that? Well, you know, I appreciate you asking and I want to be clear. My intention in asking is not to be nosy. It's really not. Instead, the more information that you're willing to share, the better equipped I am to provide you with guidance that could be helpful or useful in some way. And the reason I'm asking is, is that oftentimes, you know, when families are making decisions about where they're going to go to next, their net proceeds is actually critically important to that process. And it could be the difference between moving and not moving. So in order to provide you that information properly and professionally, I just need a roundabout. Like, do you owe like 100? Do you like 250? So do you see how I asked that question? It's couched in what is best for you. And underneath it, guys, imagine going to the doctor and they were like, so what's bothering you, Salima? And you're like, guess. It's ridiculous, stupid and dumb, right? So you have to have that understanding underneath that you asking questions is not being nosy. It's actually being a a skilled professional, right? And I need to know all the dynamics of the situation. So what happens is, is that, You know, what I see people do is they're trying to sell everybody on something. I don't sell anybody on anything. I just ask a bunch of questions to find out if they have a need that I can service. And once I hear that they have a need that I can service, then I present them with options so they can decide which option is in their best interest. That's it. Right? So um, by asking these questions in a way that people are receptive to, you will gather more information. And as you gather more information, you can determine A, if this person's motivation is an eight, nine, or a 10, and it makes sense to connect with them, or if it's a five, six, or seven. So as you're asking questions, let's say you're like, hey, you know, you strike me to be someone. So you could ask like, hey, I study homes and prices every day. Therefore, I'll assume it was a mean of prices goes to sell. So what price won't you go below? Can you imagine 
if you were selling something, Jake, like a car and somebody walked right up to you and say, hey, bro, immediately, what would you think in your head? This person's trying to steal it. Is that a fact? But you guys all ask that question. You wonder why people get defensive. Imagine if I was like, Jerry, why'd you wear that shirt, bro, on this Zoom call? Specifically, what caused you to believe that that was a good idea? What is he going to do naturally? Push back and resist. Get defensive. And get defensive. So instead, it's like, look, Jerry, you strike me to be someone who's pretty savvy. I'm sure you've gone online and seen some of these sites that give estimates of value. So did you have an idea at all of realistically what you were thinking in terms of price? I'm curious. Am I asking the same question just in a different way that's more palatable and increases the chances that you'll actually answer it? Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? So and, and I think that's the key, Ern. I think it's having multiple ways of asking different questions in a way where it's about the consumer. Elementary school is, where did you move to next? Graduate or doctorate school is having like five, six different ways of asking for the motivation in that's case right. one of they, them don't work out. Yeah, and like I was thinking when you were answering that question, you're like, you know, I've noticed patterns with homeowners. You know what's pretty wild is they usually buy a home pretty similar to the one that they currently live in, maybe with some different features and amenities. So what I'm aware of, what's up, little team? So what I'm aware of is that um, if you'd be open to sharing with me where you guys currently are, that would actually allow me to be able to find you your next home in, a, in an efficient and easy manner. So do you guys live locally here? Are you like, you know, in Camarillo? Or are you in Ventura? And then just be quiet. So again, I'm couching it in a way that's good for them to answer it. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and the purpose of prequal is not to disqualify. Like the purpose of prequal is to gather information. You know, I think that like oftentimes the way that people have been trained to prequal, it's like, yo, you you need to convince me that uh, you know, like you're worth my time to come see you. It's like, come on, bro. Like, instead, it's like, hey, I'm going to ask you some questions simply just to find out ultimately what your goals and objectives are. And my intention in doing it is not to be nosy. It's just to gather as much information as possible so I could do a great job for you and your family. I will be brief because I know your time is valuable. Right? Like, who's going to say no to that? Love and, it. Right? And, and if they are, like, there's, there's a certain portion of the population who, no matter how nicely and how kind of professionally and how skillfully you ask questions, don't want to share any information. And let me ask you a question. If they're going to be a pain in the ass at the beginning, are they going to be a pain in the ass the whole time? Anybody who's done any amount of transactions, you see the heads nodding? They're all like, yup. And, you know, when you generate, you don't have to tolerate, team. I don't have to tolerate. Like, I don't got to fucking deal with you, like, you know, thinking or saying, how'd you get my phone number? I'm like, are you the president of the United States? Like, I, last time I checked, you're just like a normal fucking dude. But you could say it this way, like, hey, you know, for better or for worse, you know, the information about your home coming off the market, it's actually public information. So I have an assistant who gathers that information for me because we have the good fortune of helping a lot of families. Like if they hired an agent and they didn't sell, we end up connecting with them and ultimately helping them accomplish their goals and objectives. I'll be sure to take it off my list. While I have you on the phone, though, your home's lovely. It's in a great geographic area, great schools. I mean, I don't need to tell you that. When you had originally put it on the market, what do you think stopped it from selling? Or when you originally put it on the market, was there any particular reason you were even considering selling? You see what I'm saying? That's going to increase the probability that you're going to want to speak to me. Love it. Of course you do. What up? Do you guys have any more questions? Something else you guys want to role play? We got 15 minutes, I think. Agua, I hope that helps. No, it did uh, very much. Thank you so much. Listen to this uh, uh, recording over and over and over. I, um, the, the actual listing presentation, I mean, I'm, I'm not like really, I don't have any script in front of me, but it's kind of like in the front of my mind, just the actual like person to person presentation. And if I like to speak about that. Sure. Let's do it. All right. So um, I, can I be the seller? <laughs> yeah. All right. What, what, Maybe next time to, I'll be better prepared to be the agent. What, what did you want to or what question did you have? Or what 
What, what did you want to work on that? I just want to get it down packed. I just yeah. want to, you know, dive in. <laughs> How do you typically start it? Just out of curiosity. Um, I, you know, come prepared with all of my, you know, my stuff, um, make my way to the kitchen table straight away. So long as it's not a hoarder house, um, claim my chair, you know, try to, you know, predict where the wife is going to sit, where the husband is going to sit. Um, you know, ask for kind of like the Mike Ferry script, you know, um, can you show me around the house? Okay. Got my yellow notepad. I'm taking notes. They can see I'm paying attention. I'm giving them the undivided attention. Um, keep it short, minimize the small talk, make my way to the kitchen table, um, open up my laptop. Um, and let's see, just get into it from, I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Um, and then, um, let me see, I don't have my script in front of me, but yeah, I, <laughs> I usually, I, I keep a really short bullet point to follow just in case if I get off track. Yeah. But how um, do you start? What do you, after all of that, what are you saying at the beginning? Um, I can't remember right now. That's amazing to have... me. First of all, you should. <laughs> Like, that's like asking a, like a, a doctor, like, where do you start? And you're like, I don't know. I can't remember. Can I ask a question about that? Well, Wait, I'm, out. I'm out. Like, before we move on from this, I want everybody on this call to realize, like, okay, you have a choice that you have to make. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. I have a choice to either be good or to be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sit still. Take it right down the pipe. Good is like yeah you know like if i can do this and then like oh where are my notes and like da 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 that's good do you know what great is great is i could wake you up in the middle of the fucking night at two o'clock in the morning and be like go and you're like hi thanks so much for having me over today first and foremost i just want to begin our time together just by saying thank you for providing me the opportunity to share some information with you potentially help you with the sale i always like to begin these conversations simply by asking a few quick questions just to make sure we're on the same page this is something jerry if you want to list property in high volume if you are going against somebody who has it down like that, you will lose every single time. I want to be the type of team that nobody wants to play. Nobody. Because they know we are well prepared, we are disciplined, we are consistent. We are going to impose our will and you're just gonna have to stop us. And if you don't, we're gonna run right over you. But I have to take that level of commitment with my skill set. Guys, doctors have stethoscopes, they have syringes, like those are their tools. You know what our tool is? This. Imagine like a, a carpenter <laughs> came to your house and they're like, hey, um, can you tell me how to use this hammer? Like, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure. Like what? Like, hey, yeah, there's this screwdriver and like, I gotta read the manual on how to do it. What? Yeah. You got the message? Got the message. Loud Good. and clear. So I, I think it comes down, Jerry, to just the fundamentals and becoming obsessed with the practicing of it, basically. Just becoming obsessed with it, like the two to three times a day, daily, six days a week. So I, I was actually going to present that at my presentation, and I did the numbers. The difference between one time a day, five days a week, and three times a day, six times a week, in three years, you practice more than you would in 10 years with a one time a day, five days a week. In three years, you've already practiced 10 years worth what somebody would practice 10 years with that, basically. So it just becomes very simple math, meaning like, hey, look, like if I want to learn this or, or master this, the more times I practice it, the more... I learn it. Now, as it relates to the presentation, Aaron and I started in different ways, you know? I think it's just a matter of finding the way that you feel comfortable with and then going with that. Aaron will start it with, uh, hey, there's three important questions and I'll start <clears throat> sometimes with a little bit of marketing or I'll start sometimes with, um, with uh, just right jumping into the CMA. I'll be very transparent with you 
I think that there's a lot of stuff going on in your head based on what I can hear. You're like, I, and, and sometimes like understanding that there's another human on the other side can be helpful. You're like, Hey, I try to limit the small talk. I go straight to the kitchen. I basically like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, I try to anticipate where the wife is going to sit. It's like, too like, it's like too rigid, too complex instead of like just showing up and being like how you doing <laughs> you know you mind if i take a tour of your property and then having them take a tour and then if they for me if they happen to talk a little bit extra i'm okay with that because i want to make them feel comfortable they're paying me in california they're paying me twenty thirty thousand dollars to sell a property i'm okay if they deviate a little bit and they talk a little bit more because then they feel understood then we walk over, like I've even had it, bro, where like initially we walk in and they're and they're like, hey, do you mind sitting down in the couch? We sit down in the couch, but bef- we do a little bit of small talk. And before we start the presentation, I'm like, okay, great. Do you guys mind if I take a quick tour around the property? But we did a little bit of small talk at the very beginning. And I'm okay with that um, just because like uh, – I know that once it actually becomes game on, I know the direction that I'm going to take it in basically, you know? So what I would say is, or, or let me ask it this way. How many times like, are you practicing a day, the, the listing presentation? I'm practicing the phone call scripts mostly, but not much on the listing presentation. No. And then, and then, and then what are you practicing on the phone call scripts? Most. Aaron, you're silent. Oh, I said, which is evident. <laughs> so what, what, what script are you f- f- practicing on the uh, phone call conversations? My distressed um, script. Okay. So he, here's what I believe, Jerry. I personally believe that all of the scripts are connected to each other. I mm-hmm. believe that only practice one script as soon as somebody says something that's off that script you're going to be completely lost and you're not going to know what to go by Mm -hmm. so what i believe is i would like and i practice like i had a stack of like 200 fucking papers bro and i would literally go to the 200 papers and i would chant out the the different scripts because i knew that if it was calling an expired Somebody might say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go for sale by owner. And then I had to switch to a for sale by owner script. And it's almost like if I didn't understand that, then I wouldn't be able to transition effectively. I knew that if somebody was, uh, I was talking to somebody on the phone, somebody might be like, well, how much is my home worth? And I may have to somewhat jump into a little bit of a CMA presentation at the listing presentation over the phone if um, just to give them a rough ballpark. So my philosophy is that if you only practice one, as soon as somebody says something that's off the script and, and they all work like the for sale by owner script says, or the expire says, are you familiar with the techniques that I use to sell homes? That might be a close for a different situation. One of them says, um, uh, they say different things. So I think that they're all connected. And I think that And this would happen to me when I would role play with people, I would role play things that I felt comfortable with. So I got to the point where I would role play expires every single day and people would be like, damn, you're good. But then they'd be like, how much production do you do? And I'd be like, oh, I do like 20 deals a year. They'd be like, why are you so good at expires, but you only take 20 listings a year? And the reason is I, my ego would not allow me to, to, to be, to work on my weaknesses Therefore, like I would try to practice what I was most comfortable with instead of practicing my weakness. So we just exposed that the listing presentation is a big weakness right now. So I would mm-hmm. encourage to practice that not until you get it right, but until you can't get it wrong, meaning until you start feeling more comfortable. And guess what? If you get really good at your listing presentation, it's going to get you a lot more confidence to go after people more aggressively. Once I got good, before I got good at my listing presentation, I wasn't as aggressive as setting appointments. 
once I got good at my listing presentation, I got extremely aggressive because I knew that if I can get in front of them, I was going to get paid. And yeah, there was a very good chance of getting that contract. Yeah, it's spot on. Because people unconsciously actually hold themselves back from being more aggressive with setting appointments because they're not confident, which is really means they don't trust themselves with the listing presentation. 100%. 100%. Thank you, guys. That would happen to me, Jerry, all the time. So hey, Jerry's like, Jerry's like, hey, I'm done, bro. Uh, that's enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see that? As we're talking, he's like, thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, bye. Got to go. Here's the other thing I would no. say, Jerry. Practice it in sections, bro. So there's a couple different sections. There's the pro section of the presentation. There's the CMA portion of the presentation. And then there's the closing portion of the presentation. Break it down to different sections as you're practicing, basically. So master yeah. the, you know, like, hey, look. And then roll with the punches sometimes, bro. My first mentor literally walked into a presentation, did not say a word about real estate, just talked to her about her cat and dog, got to know them. And they, he took the listing. And when I saw that, I was like, I was like gung ho, Mike Fury. And he took me on that presentation. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Just happened. <laughs> I was like, and then that made me realize I'm like, it's not all, it's not all gung ho like Mike Fury. It's about being adaptable, you know? Yeah. It's <clears throat> Ooh, yeah, and what I would propose is you still want to follow like a track because I think people would hear that, Jose, and sometimes they might be like, oh, you know. So like there's two separate skills. There's intellectual intelligence and emotional intelligence. Yeah. Intellectual intelligence is knowing what to say and how to say it. Emotional intelligence is where the um, kind of what to say is ingrained in me so I don't have to think about it anymore. If you've ever heard of that saying discipline creates freedom, it's true. So me being disciplined with learning the script, you know, when Jose came to me, he was doing like, let's say 20 deals. And he asked me, what do I have to do to like, you know, be as skilled? And I'm like, look, you got to role play twice a day, six days a week. And you got to chance scripts and do all that. He's just one of the only people that ever did it. So that gets you to a place where I, you, there's nothing you could say to me that I'm not prepared for. I mean, imagine the trust that you have in yourself, that there is nothing anybody can say to you in a real estate conversation that you wouldn't be prepared for. Now, then and only then can I start to pay attention to your tonality. Can I start to pay attention to your kind of, you know, are you wincing when we're talking about the price? Are you crossing your arms? Like, is the husband glancing at the wife or vice versa? Like I, now and then and only then can I start to pay attention to those things. So there's stages, but I need everybody on this call to recognize like, you have to get yourself to a place where you are fucking sick and tired of not knowing what to say. Like you have to hate it. And, and hate is a strong word. But mm -hmm. You have to hate it. I am tired of telling this fucking story. I'm tired of saying I'm going to start. Oh, you know, this is the year. No, you don't know me. Yay. Like you got to get to a point where you're like, bro, am I an amateur or a pro? Like that's the decision you have to make. And it doesn't take that long. If you follow this prescription that we're talking about twice a day, six days a week, I promise you in a year, your skills will be infinitely better. Your level of confidence would be infinitely better. Right? So um, just to share, right now what I'm practicing is the Mike Ferry one minute presentation. Um, do you suggest anything other? Yes. What would that be? Uh, you're on a call with somebody who sold 2,000 homes in their career and 80% of them were listings sold. That is precisely um, 15 years longer than someone else. No, but so, I... So well, what I would suggest... Can I have your like, script? No, but again, you're, you're thinking in your mind, and I love you, Jerry, you're, you're analytical by nature. You're trying to think, <laughs> do like A plus B equals C. Fucking stop it. Just practice more. Period. Like, run through the whole script. Not like, well, you know, I'm working on the one minute. No, do the whole thing. You know what that's like? I'm going to the gym and I and I lift weights once and I leave. Is there anything else I should be focused on? Like, well, I, yes, bro. I, I, more effort, more time. Like, you have to, like, like if you said to me, hey, bro, I am writing out the whole listing presentation by hand. You know, I did that every day for 90 days straight. 
every fucking day for 90 days straight. Like that's what I'm saying. Listen, but Jerry, is your level of effort in alignment with what your goals are? I'm 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 gonna step up. I'm stepping it up right now. Just good. But l- listen to taking me this beat down. <laughs> Listen, I, I read a quote that said, "You'll realize when you're 25, the coach that pushed you the most loved you the most." Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is not coming from me being a jerk. What I'm saying to you is you have to make a decision if this is acceptable to me. If like you do, you have to set a standard and step into it. Like, is it acceptable for me? To like not know what to say on appointments. Is it acceptable for me that like it where somebody can give me an objection and I have to go back to my family members and be like, hey, we can't do that because I didn't know what to say. They told me they want to think about it. And I walked out with my tail between my legs. So we can't take that trip to Disney. That's what this is, guys. That's the level of urgency that it requires. And in a marketplace, where God, I want you to realize something, OK? The last time we had this level of transactions, we had 719,000 agents. There's 1.5 million agents. Half. It's two deals for every agent in the United States. Do you know why? Because they don't go pro. Make a decision. Are you going to be a pro at this or an amateur? Amateurs can make 100 grand. You know what pros make? A million dollars a year, bro. Jerry, you're an elite builder, right? Yes. You have access to Aaron's scripts. I think that's what he's saying. He's like, you have access to Aaron's scripts. Mm-hmm. You have access to my scripts as well, too. Start chanting all of them, including the Mike Ferry. And then what's going to happen, this is what happens to me, is that once you start chanting them, you're going to be in a situation, and then all of a sudden, the right words are going to come out. And you're going to be like, where the fuck did that come from? Like, why did I say that? But the reason is that you're chanting the scripts, basically. Yeah, and I'm also aware, Jerry, you have access to the role play group. Are you in the role play group? No. Why? I'm in this one only. Why? What are you doing at 7.30 in the morning? <laughs> oh, did you notice Sleeping. the last response <laughs> from Mr. Jerry? <laughs> what are you doing at 11.30 in the afternoon? Exactly. Miscellaneous. Exactly. Miscellaneous, which is code word for fucking nonsense. Well, I'll, I'll tell you guys this thing too. Like, we could lead to like a cycle of burnout if we just prospect, 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 go on appointments, go on appointments, and then have a very low conversion rate and we don't practice, basically. I'll tell mm-hmm. you guys this. Like, earlier on in my career, where I felt the lowest convers- conversion was any period of time where I stopped practicing, basically. And as soon as I felt it, I was like, this is not acceptable to me. Like, I need to practice, and I would fucking fill up my schedule again with practice. Yeah, so- and, and then I just remained very consistent with it, basically. But the problem is that if you guys don't take this practice thing seriously, like a professional, you guys are going to run into this cycle where it's just, you're prospecting and you're having to talk to three, 400 people to g- generate one listing instead of like 50, 60 people to generate one listing because you think that pra- that that you need to be prospecting and not practicing. And practicing is equally, like think about this. If practice wasn't important, Jerry, how much do football players practice before they play on a Sunday night game? 80 hours. Oh. 400 me. hours. For a three-hour game, bro. It's actually Every- 60 minutes. It's three hours because of the commercials, bro. You know what I'm saying? For- so, like, Jerry, I, I want to, like, this is the teachable moment for you and everybody on the call. So you were asking about, hey, like, is there anything else I could be doing? And I'm doing the one minute. that Yeah, you know what you could be doing? Practicing every goddamn day. That's the answer. More. It's not some sort of magic pill. It's not some sort of if you if you read one section and this and this. The old dude. I'd love to be able to outsource push-ups to the Philippines and I'd get ripped. That'd be dope, bro. I wouldn't have to work out. I wouldn't have to do all this shit. But that's not the way the world works. That's like asking yourself, hey, is there anything else I could do to like help this plant grow other than like water it and fucking give it sunlight? No. It's it's simple, but it's not to be confused with easy. So what's interesting is like as we're this conversation, I'm like, hey, bro, look, the group's available to you. Most people pay $1,000 for the year to be in that group. 
Role play partner five days a week. All you have to do is show up. All you have to do is show up. So may I make a suggestion? Show, show up. up. <laughs> And even even like at the event that you were at, Jerry, whenever I would go to the event, my mission would be to walk away with new role play partners from the events. Basically, I would literally go up to people and be like, hey, look, like uh, like because like, let's say you want to role play fucking four times a, a day, you know, like I would literally like go to events and be like, OK, like I'm going to fill up my schedule and I'm going to go after people who I believe are doing more business than I did. So I would. I would go up to people like Aaron be like, can I get you on my schedule? I would go up to people like Neil Weichel. I would go up to people like Ed Kaminsky. I would go up to just different people that were doing a lot more business than I was. And then I'd role play with them. And then I would not miss ever because I knew that as soon as I missed, it was an excuse for them to get me off their schedule. Do you know that he actually, it took him like nine months to get in my schedule, bro. <laughs> he would ask me and ask me. I'd be like, nah, bro, check back, check back, check back. Nah, bro, I'm good, I'm good. But I was really testing him because out of 100 people that I would say check back with me, like fucking one would. But once he got in the schedule, he never missed, bro. Every day, always on time. So listen, guys, I'm noticing our time. This has been enjoyable use of my non-refundable precious breaths. I think it has been for Jose and John. Listen. There's no magic answer. Turn yourself into the person that can do hard things and you're unstoppable. Let's go be great. Elite Builders Coast to Coast. There it is.